Yo, what is good? God is good. I know that's 100% true all the time, regardless how I feel. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of where you're tuning in from, we have a special word today. Yes, you see that. I got my script ready in the name of Jesus. God is good. Where are you joining us from right now? Please let us know where you are joining from in the comments. We appreciate you guys. We are going to share the word of the Lord today. I am looking forward to this. God is good. We went over this word last night. Twice. I went live on my wife's phone. And it died halfway through the sermon. Then I did it again and it died while I was praying at the end. So what's up, Brother Allen from Texas? Where are you tuning in from? Go ahead and let us know where you guys are tuning in from. We love to see it. If you are so bold to do so, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the video died while I was praying. Ghana, what's up, Isaac from Ghana? Appreciate you, my bro. Thank you. And so here we go. We're going to go ahead and get into the word of the Lord. Uh, God is good. My name is Taylor Martin. I am a Christian hip hop artist from Seattle, Washington. I have been serving the Lord with my whole heart for the past eight years. I've been surrendered. We created a ministry called Sacred Music Tribe. If uh, what's up, my brother Rose. Uh, what's up, my brother Runners High from Rosedale, M.D.? What's up, Alexander Rain? I got your verse pretty much written. What's up, Prince YT from India? Shalom, yo. We got we got we got people popping up from over the world. Let's go. We got India. What did they say? Ghana. What did they say? We got Texas. Okay. Shalom from India. What's good? Yo, Elias from Oh no, no, you said free Palestine. Okay. God is good. Uh, but we started a Christian hip hop ministry. Uh, myself and there was a point when there's probably like eight other. Uh, individuals, eight other men, and we're just lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Um, oh, you're from ne Lebanon. Yo, what's good, Elias? Shalom, Lebanon. What's good, Lebanon? Man, hallelujah. Let's go, my boy. It's beautiful to see we can connect from across the world. But yeah, Jesus Christ set me free from a life of just spiraling without Christ. You know, I would, you know, smoke marijuana from an early age, drink a lot of alcohol. Christ set me free from all of that. He purified me. He sanctified me. He got me in tune with the Bible. And uh, I've been serving the Lord for eight years. We have many projects out. Um, go to Spotify, type in Taylor Martin. It's Christian hip hop music. Or go to YouTube and type in Sacred Music Tribe. We're doing some more in-depth stuff. Me and my wife just did a dope video the other day. It's called The Book That Kept Us Together. It's a marriage book that uh, we read when I was in Seattle. She was in Florida. Uh, she saw me preaching and ministering and was thanking me for sharing the word. And, uh, from there, uh, God just took over. We fell in love and, and now we are here. Hey, hello. What's up? Sing. Where are you from, brother? Shalom. Um, but anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and invite the Holy Spirit in every believer watching. Let's focus on God really quick. And we're going to invite God in. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Dear Father God, dear Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to exist right now. What's up, Jesus? We know you're seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah, God. I thank you when I'm able to be used by you. And I know it's an honor and it's a privilege, Jesus. So we just invite you in right now. God, have your way. Help marriages. Help those who are single. Help those who are struggling with addiction. Help them get free from this video. Help those who are struggling in their faith that they're feeling like the problems and issues of life are more powerful than you, God. I pray that you would speak through this video. You would breathe on it, God. If you could use a jawbone of a donkey. If you could use two fish and five loaves. God, you can use an Instagram live video to encourage somebody's destiny and to touch them with the Holy Ghost. Have your way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. What's up, James Whitehead Ministries, Salt Shakers? I love you, my brother. God is good. So we are going to be speaking from John 11. 
I recently finished the entire Bible. It took me like six years, but praise God. So now I'm just opening it up randomly. If it's not Proverbs, you know, Proverbs a day keeps the devil away. <laughs> so my bro, Brian T. King of Music says, um, but uh, we're just randomly opening the word uh, last night and uh, John 11. I began reading about Lazarus. So Lazarus, yes, the man who was brought back to life uh, after he died. But we're going to see how this pertains to your particular situation right now, because the word of God is not just a blanket statement for everybody existing in 2023. No, this is a specific love letter from Jesus seated at the right hand of the father to you. OK, so when we read now, a man was sick. Lazarus from Bethany, I want to substitute Lazarus with your name. OK, so Raphael. Now a man was sick, Raphael, from wherever you're from. Or now a man was sick, Taylor, from Seattle. Now, a man was sick, Clay, from wherever you're from, Clay, who just joined. Um, and so we'll use me for example. Now, a man was sick, Taylor, from Seattle, the village of Mary and Sister Martha. No, we'll say the brother of CJ and Alexa. Those are my siblings because God has a specific word for you. It's not a blanket statement. It's not God so loved the world Yo, you're from Brazil. That's tight, bro. It's not God so loved the world um, in just a vague way. It's God so loved you, you. And until you can get to that moment where you're able to focus on the fact that God loves you specifically, he's trying to talk to you specifically through the word. It's not just like any other book. This is the living word of God. The mouth of God can speak through this book. There is a creator in heaven who wants to talk to you about your individual situation. He wants to talk to you about your individual life. He wants to set you free from the sins that you might be entangled in. He wants to forgive you of your past and empower you to walk a life of righteousness and freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. God has a purpose and a plan for your specific unique life so it's not uh there was a man sick lazarus from bethany it's there was a man sick Raphael from brazil the brother of da -da 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 -da, sister of da -da 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 -da, okay so this is god speaking to you god is speaking to you now god is speaking to you now and god is saying this mary was the one who anointed the lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. And it was her brother, Lazarus, who was sick. So the sisters sent a message to him. Lord, the one you love is sick. See, Mary is using wisdom right here. She's holding God at his own word. Which the word of God never comes back void. But it does all that it set out to do it accomplishes all that it set out to do so if we're claiming god's love for us there's power in that there's power in that that's how the disciple john was still with jesus when he got crucified because john was so big on jesus's love for him but peter was so big on his love for jesus we have to count on God's love for us more than we count on our love for God. Our love is up and down sometimes. You know, I love my wife, but sometimes I can be crabby. You know, if I haven't had my coffee yet, you know, if I'm having a stressful day, I might not always be as loving as I should be, but God is consistent. His love is always God's love is pure. He died for us while we were still sinners. He gave us his best while we were at our worst. Okay. God's love is fire. We're saved by the love of God for the love of God. You ever heard somebody say that for the love of God, <laughs> for the love of God, you know, Muslims and oh no, it was Muslims. Muslims are more often uh, converted to Christianity because of the love that Christians have or 
when Jesus appears to them in a dream. But look at that. It's the love of God. It's the love of God, you know, that, that moves us. And, 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 and Mary, she understood this. So when she came to Jesus, she said, Lord, the one you love is sick. Like the one you love, she's putting pressure on Jesus. Put your weight on Jesus. Jesus can handle your weight. Jesus can handle your weight, your faith. You're like, I need these finances, Jesus. I need this breakthrough in my relationship, Jesus. I'm preaching to myself already right now. So I'm not preaching to you like, like, I'm, like I'm Christ himself. I'm, a, I'm your brother in Christ sharing the word of the Lord today, okay? So the one you love is sick. We got to count on God's love for us. Again, that's why John was still around at the cross because he was counting on Jesus' love for him. But Peter was nowhere to be seen because Peter was like, Lord, I love you. I'll never deny you. It's human, it's human strength. We got to trust in God's love for us more than we trust in God, our love for God. Okay. Lord, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness will not end in death, but it is for the glory of God. When I read that last night, I had to pause for a second. This sickness will not end in death, but it's for the glory of God. What are you going through right now that threatens you? To like ruin everything. What are you going through right now that threatens you to ruin everything? And God wants to tell you, yo, that's not going to ruin everything. It's going to result in the glory of God. It's going to result in the glory of God. No matter what whack trial you might be facing, difficult thing you might be facing. God says, I'm going to do something here. That's going to make you be like, yo, God is fire. I'm going to do something here that makes you praise God. I'm going to do something here that makes you worship God because it seems like it can't happen. But where man says impossible, God says I'm possible with man. There are things that are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So sometimes God will put us in a situation where it looks like it's case closed. But ultimately, it's just God showing that he can rise from the grave. That's tight. It's ultimately God saying he can rise from the grave. All right. God can rise from the grave. Jesus Christ is above psychology. Jesus Christ is above the stock market. Jesus Christ is above the way you analyze your situation. Jesus Christ is above the way you try to follow trends. Jesus Christ is above the way people try to predict things. God can do anything. Okay. So he's saying this tough situation is just a platform for me to show my glory. The tough situation you're going through is just an opportunity for God to show out. It's just an opportunity for God to show you how fire he is. All right. So whatever you're going through, God is going to show you how fire he is through that. All right. He said, now Jesus loved Martha, her sister and Lazarus. Isn't that sweet? God loves the whole family. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So <clears throat> when he heard he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now, sometimes I could run around like a chicken with my head cut off, nervous, worried, scared, shook, you know. But look at Jesus. He says he loved them, so he stayed two more days. He wants to show how cool, calm, and collected he can be in the midst of a crisis. No matter what trial you're going through or disaster, look at Jesus has his arms back. He has his feet kicked up and he's big chilling. It reminds me of when they were in the winds and the waves and the storm. And the disciples are freaking out, but Jesus is asleep. It's like this worship song. My, my wife, babe, what's that worship song that I can sleep through the storm? Yeah, I can sleep through the storm. Is that it? Yeah. Or is it a different one? Yeah, that one. She's like this girl. She's saying like now she can sleep through the storm. Can you sleep through storms knowing that Jesus is sleeping through the storm? When you're going through hard times, does your uh, adrenaline begin to get going and you get into fight or flight mode and and, and you're just like overloaded stress and anxiety and like oh no oh no or are you like yo God got this. 
And people are like, why, why are you chilling right now? Like, the house is on fire. It's like that meme. You ever seen that meme where the dog is drinking coffee and there's fire all around him? And he's like, this is fine. It's so funny. I'm going to post it later. This is fine. <laughs> you know, it's like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego when they were in the fire, but they were chilling. They were chilling in the fire. Chilling, fire, pun intended. I know it's corny. But yeah, um, next time something's trying to present itself and it's risky for me to preach this message because it's like when I'm preaching something, it's like sometimes God will test me in it. So I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of the fact that Jesus was chilling while there was a crisis. Somebody just died and Jesus wasn't running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Somebody just died. And Jesus is posted up, like, chilling, like, all right, I got this, like, like, Sigma, like, it's going to be cool. I'm cool. I got this, you know? And so I encourage you, next time you're going through any sort of storm, Christ is still, even with the chaos of the winds and the waves, our God is always the same. He's stationary. We have the same God from the Bible. We have the same God. Who is seated at the right hand of the Father. Look, check this out. From the moment you're watching this Instagram live with the Holy Ghost. To the moment when your body dies. Jesus Christ will be seated at the right hand of the Father. He has every solution. He has every answer for every problem. Isn't that amazing? God is holy. And Jesus Christ is good. Alright, so Jesus is relaxed. And... After that, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. And they said, Rabbi, that means teacher. The disciples told him, just now the Jews tried to stone you. Like he said, Yo, they just tried to kill you, Jesus. And you're going there again? Bro, they just tried to kill you. Are you sure you want to go there again? Look, Jesus doesn't fear near death experiences. Isn't that fire? Like, he like... Just almost faced death, but he's like, let's go back. <laughs> like, look at how committed to his calling and his destiny he is. Like, that'd be dope to be like that. I know me, if God does something fire, you know, and then like, I go through something really difficult, I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to do that again. But sometimes, you know, the spirit of, of Christ will have me to do things that are difficult, you know, but it's all glory to God. All glory to God. He, he, Jesus does not fear near death experiences. All right. Um, he said, aren't there 12 hours in a day? That was Jesus's answer. They said, you sure you want to go there? They just try to kill you. And Jesus said, aren't there 12 hours in a day? Basically, he's saying, yo, we still got time. And if you still got time, you still got time. Be productive. Use your time. He said, if anyone walks during the day, he doesn't stumble. But he sees the light of the world. He's saying, use your day to serve God. While you still have a day, use your opportunity. He said, but if anyone walks during the night, he does stumble because the light is not in him. He's like, walk in the light, walk in the openness. You know, use the day. I've given you a day to give me glory. I've gi That's what your day is for. It's for giving God glory. So when you see that person today, while you're in the Uber, share your faith with him. While you're ordering your sandwich from Arby's, share your faith with that, that worker there. While you're at Target, share your faith there. You know, that's what your day has been given for. Make that post. You know what I'm saying? Write that song. Write that sermon. Text your friend. Jesus loves them. You know what I'm saying? Text your family. Use your day for God. That's why you have the day. All right? Okay, so Jesus finally gets over here. And, and, and this is probably going to be my last point. Jesus finally gets over there. All right? And they said, hold up. Okay, 11. Okay, here we go. One moment, one moment, one moment. Be patient, be patient. Look, I read my Bible so much, it's falling apart. Hey, somebody told me, he's like, bro, you're going to go to church with your Bible looking like that? I said, you know what? That means I read it. It's like if there's two shields, there's two soldiers, one that looks all shiny. And like, there's no dings, no dents, like his armor is just like perfect and flawless. And then there's another one. He got, you know, 
blood on his shield. He got dings. Half of his helmet is missing. You know, he got an arrow sticking out of his right shoulder. Like, yo, that dude right there, he went through a battle. He uses his armor. My Bible is falling apart because I'm using my armor. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother Raphael. Okay. Um, here we go. So Jesus got there. Jesus got there to Mary. Or to Martha, excuse me. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. So she's basically saying like, God, if you're good, you know, I wouldn't be going through this. You know, sometimes we go through uh, something difficult and we be like, we be like, oh, man, God is not at my back. God is not. Or instantly our emotions will begin to take over. We're like, oh, no, everything's going wrong. Like, bro, God is in control. No matter what you're facing, God is in control. Sometimes we go through something rough. You know, because God wants to show you how fire he is and how he can transcend it. The Bible says that the enemy comes in like a flood, but God will lift up a standard against him. So sometimes when the enemy comes in like a flood, it's just so God has an opportunity to lift up a standard against him to show him that death can't stop him. Sin can't stop him. This world can't stop him. People's doubts can't stop him. Haters can't stop him. Nothing can stop him. Not even death. It's going to stop him. I'm going to live forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, I will see you in heaven because I know I'm going to be there. Why? Because of my relationship with my king. I know I'm going to go to heaven because this Bible is not a joke. And because I've been submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ for eight years and I'm forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I've been empowered to live a life free of breaking bondages and strongholds inside of my life. God has given me the gift of eternal life and salvation. I'm going to live after this body passes away. When this body passes away, don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. Celebrate for me because I just been graduated up into the pearly gates and I'm skating on gold streets. Amen. This life is temporary anyways. All right. But God is forever. Jesus Christ is eternal. And so Jesus said, Jesus said, he said, uh, Jesus said, where have you put him? And that's where I want to stay for a second. Milvo, what's up, my brother? I appreciate you always showing love, man. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, so check this out. Jesus said, where have you put him? And that's where I want to ask you watching. Where did you put that thing to die that God was working on? Where did you put that thing to die? Because Jesus goes up and he says, Lazarus, come out. He says, Lazarus, come out. And God wants to say that to your singleness. Marriage, come out. And to your financial difficulty, he wants to say, financial stability, come out. And to your lack of influence, God wants to say, ministry, come out. And to those issues, God wants to say, answer, come out. And to whatever problem you're going through, God can say, solution, come out. Whatever is dying in your life, God can say, life. Come out the walk with Christ when you were letting Christ work on your heart and your character behind the scenes and you laid it down to die. Jesus is asking you right now, where did you lay that down? Where did you lay your faith down? Where did you lay your prayer life down? Where did you lay your worship life down? Where did you lay your faith walk down? Because God wants to resurrect it right now. He's saying, come back to life. I can resurrect your spiritual life. You still have time. There are still days. There's still time. God wants to speak to you right now. And God is speaking to you specifically right now. I don't know who it is, but God is speaking to you specifically and saying, come back to life. Come back to the spiritual life. Come back to prayer. Come back to faith. Come back to worship. Come back to reading the word. Come back to basing your life off of what God say and not what other people say. Come back to life. God can call anything out. God can bring anything back to life. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're going to reign forever for all of eternity with the most high king. And I'm going to be up there and all the saints of old are going to be up there. But while you're here, God still says, don't let those things die, which I gave life. I want to call them back to life. Your ministry, your marriage, your finances, whatever you have put down and you let die. Jesus is asking you, where have you laid it? Where have you laid it? And they told him, come and see. 
So show God right now in your heart. Show God right now in your heart that you know what area of your life he's talking about. Because God's talking to you about a specific area of your life that you let down. And you gave up on. And you said, you know what? God said something about this one point in time. But I'm not believing it anymore. God spoke one promise over my life. But you know what? I'm not trusting God for that anymore. I'm not doing my part anymore. I'm not digging holes in the desert anymore for rain to fill those holes up. I'm not believing God that the rain is coming. I'm not believing that the best is still yet to come. I'm not trusting God for his word anymore. I'm not believing that my family will be made whole again. I'm not believing that I will have a beautiful marriage again. I'm not believing that I will be financially stable again. I'm not believing that I'm going to be able to have influence in ministry again. I'm not believing that I'm going to be able to have peace of mind, mental health, and creative ideas for the body of Christ. Where did you give up hope that God could still move? Where did you give up hope that God could still bring life in those dead places? Let God know. Say it's right here, God. Whatever those things are. I'm going to pray for those things right now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray and we're going to believe together that God's going to call those things back to life. And here we go. And dear Heavenly Father, God, we pray for anything that is of you, God, that has been dying, Father. The, the, the gifts that you've given us that we've been leaving dormant, God. The relationships that are of you that we've been leaving dormant, God. The dreams that you've given us that we've been sleeping on father we ask that you would wake them up that you would call them out god like you did for lazarus god we hear you saying come out come out marriage come out financial stability come out ministry god we we trust you that you're going to bring these things to life have your way inside of us and in our life until we have eternal life that we're going to raise from the grave god in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen and amen we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. God is good. We are on the move. Um, Jesus Christ is holy. Stephanie just released her first single. Go type in Stephanie Martin on Spotify. Same God or the link is in my bio. We're getting ready to have a baby. If anybody wants to give to uh, the family or the ministry, you could type what it's for on Cash App, Sacred Music Tribe. Um, we don't do this for money. I don't do this for money. I've been serving Christ for eight years, uh, way before I was getting paid for ministry. Um, and I'm still going to continue to, to serve Christ. You know, Jehovah Jireh is my provider. He always provides for me. He always takes care of me, um, no matter what I do, no matter where I go. But if anyone feels led, some people have been paying tithes um, um, to the ministry. We appreciate that. Um, we also have a men's Bible study um, on Saturday. If you're a man of God interested in that, go ahead and inbox me. It's through Zoom. Um, we, we get a little bit more um, intimate. It's a little more back and forth and stuff like that. And so God is on the move. Um, we know we've been called to uh, serve the Lord. And we're going to keep letting God have his way inside of our life. We do have mu new music coming as well. Um, we appreciate you guys. And uh, God is good. Thank you so much for joining. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's go. Yeah, yeah.